As a reminder, today's format will be extended until 12.20, and then the committee will adjourn. So we're probably looking at about four rounds today. I would like to now welcome our witnesses. As an individual on video conference, we have Mitch Bur... Okay, this is where I've got to fix this. One moment, please. Is Bourbonnier. Bourbonnier. So thank you, Leah, for helping me that. So thank you, Mitch, for joining us. From the Native Council of Nova Scotia, Lorraine Augustine, who is the President and Chief, thank you so much for being here in person and meeting with us. From the Quebec Native Women Inc. We have Marjolaine Etienne, who is the president, and she too is on video conference. And on video conference from the women of the Métis Nation, we have Melanie Oman Iho. And if I've pronounced anything incorrectly, please make sure you correct me on the record. We will begin with opening statements. I will wind you up at the five minute mark. So, you know, you might take up to 510, but we tried to keep our time tight. So, I'm going to begin by uh, turning it over to Mitch. Mitch, you have five minutes. I've got our Mitch, I don't believe we can hear you, so if you can unmute and we'll start you over again. You're still showing as muted. Perfect. Okay, I'm That's, sorry. It's now all I'm good. Muted. Okay. <laughs> so I'll uh, begin my submission. Uh, my name is Mitch Bourbonier, and I'm joining you from Winnipeg, Manitoba, where I live and work. I sit on the homeland of the Anishinaabe, the Cree the OG Cree, the Dakota, the Dene, and the Red River Métis. I am involved with the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women, girls, and Two-Spirit. I have volunteered for several years with a group called Drag the Red. We searched the Red River in Winnipeg for evidence of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. It is heavy work. It is emotional work. I regularly help the women leaders in Winnipeg in doing land searches and helping with vigils and other events involved in this issue. I organize and participate in seven different community walks a week where we patrol the inner city of Winnipeg neighborhoods. I'm also involved in the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous men and boys. This Father's Day will mark our seventh annual walk and honoring day for missing and murdered Indigenous men and boys in Winnipeg. I run two men's programs, one in Winnipeg and one in Fox Lake First Nation. These programs are meant to help heal men and to rid our nations of toxic masculinity and to honor women and girls as life givers and matriarchs. I have been invited to other First Nation communities to advise on local men starting their own groups. Myself and some of the men I work with are often called upon by women in the community who need protection and safety as they pack up their children and belongings to leave an abusive situation. We will sit on each side of that man as he watches his family pack up to leave. We will turn to him and we will say, if you truly want to work at ever getting your family back, you need to come with us and do the hard work that it's going to take to heal yourself and rid yourself of the toxicity that was pro programmed into you growing up. Lots of our men were little boys who watched their mothers get terrorized. They felt helpless to protect their mother. Yet it became so normal growing up that they fell into the same behavior as young men and men. We tap into the little boy that was horrified by the violence. In terms of the search for missing Indigenous women and girls, we consistently network with various community groups in Winnipeg, especially when particularly urgent situations of missing Indigenous women arise. The groups I regularly consult with include the Bear Clan, Community 204, the Sabe Peace Walkers, Initiative, and the Downtown Community Safety Partnership. In terms of the Red Dress Alert, I am so thankful 
that there are those working to make this a reality. I hope and expect that the families of those who have lost or are missing an Indigenous woman or girl will be involved and consulted with. I would also love to see a local and national command centre with dedicated, full-time, paid staff around the clock where community helpers like ourselves can communicate with experts around this issue on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much for your testimony. Really appreciate it. I'm now going to pass it over to the Native Council of Nova Scotia. And Lorraine, you have the floor for five minutes. Thank you. First of all, I just want to uh, thank the committee for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak against the, uh, the red dress uh, alert system. My name is, as you know, is Lorraine Augustine, um, the Chief and President of the Native Council of Nova Scotia, uh, who represent the off reserve and the non status in the province. We are now be celebrating our 50th anniversary uh, of the organization in September. So I want to talk a little bit, I don't have speaking notes to, to pass out, I don't normally uh, speak from a speech, uh, but I did make some notes. One of the things that concern me with the, the red dress alert is who's going to administer it. Um, and it, when it comes to uh, alert like that, it really needs to be about the women. And I can't stress this enough about when it comes to government policy, government legislation, anything that's going on, it always seems to be about organizations or it always seems to be about the so-called Section 35 rights holders. Well, if we really look at the Constitution, uh, Section 35 talks nothing about rights. It just talks about who an Aboriginal person is within Canada. Uh, so I have to reiterate the fact that it's our women, our Indigenous women, that need to be protected. And I'm telling you, you've got a long road ahead of you when it comes to developing this red dress alert. Who's going to administer it? Uh, I believe it should be the Indigenous people. Uh, is it going to be something that is going to be put off by a, a time frame? There has to be specific guidelines uh, issued in order to to implement this and when it comes to the RCMP or the policing I can almost guarantee you a lot of the women will not call because they're afraid our women have been taken by policemen and murdered and raped that's the reality so when we're going to develop any kind of red alert system we have to really be sure who is going to be administering this. And from my perspective, it needs to be the Indigenous organizations. If it's going to be a policing, then they has to have Indigenous women or Indigenous employees who are going to administer this. The system that you're talking about, is that going to be something that there's going to be a time frame. Pacific guidelines need to be developed because are we going to wait 24 hours, 48 hours? A woman could be laying in a ditch by then. So we need to be very, very cognizant of the time. Guidelines on who and when to report are missing and murdered. And in terms of the red dress, um, system in the public helping uh, our Indigenous women. That's going to take some time. Matter of fact, it's going to take a lot of time. Because when it comes to our Indigenous women, as opposed to a non-Indigenous woman being missing or murdered, they're right on it. But when it comes to our Indigenous women, sometimes they just shrug their shoulders and say, oh, it's just another Indian. So it's going to take a lot of work in order for us to be out there. And the alert system, is it going to be similar to the Amber Alert? Is it going to be immediate? Who is going to be allowed to report that? 
So I envy the work that you're going to be doing because it's going to be a long road in order to, to get this system up and running properly. And keep in mind, it's not about organizations. It's not about, uh, you know, the national organizations that are out there or the women's. It's our women, and we need to include our women. We have to include our Indigenous women and protect them. So there has to be more than just the red alert system. We have to look at prevention. You know, the system to start, prevention is really important as well. So I guess I've been given the hands up, so I'll stop for now. Thank you so much for your powerful testimony. Oh, there you go. I just, <laughs> I'm now going to pass it over to the Quebec Native Women Incorporated to Marjolaine. Marjolaine, online, you have five minutes. Melanie, I think, okay, right now I think Marjolaine has her headset off. I'm going to turn it over to Melanie for her five minutes. Melanie, if you could take the floor for five. So good morning. Um, my name is Melanie Omanheo and I'm president of La Femme Chifo de Pemsoac. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm joining you today from Treaty 6 territory and the home of the motherland of the Métis Nation. LFMO uh, is, no, is the National Indigenous Women's Organization that represent the voices of Métis women from across the Métis Nation motherland. We advocate nationally and internationally for equal treatment, health, and well-being of all Métis people with a focus on the rights, needs, and priorities of Métis women, youth, children, and 2SLGBTQIA plus persons. LFMO envisions a wider alert system that prioritizes first and foremost Indigenous women, youth, and 2SLGBTQ plus persons who are at risk of going missing, experiencing gender-based violence, and femicide. We can do this by centering the living experiences as the most vulnerable of our communities because there is no inec uh, there is too much inequity and oppression within the structures that exist. This includes Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse persons who are already subject to missing persons reporting and those who are likely to be subject to a red dress alert. This ensures a more effective and timely response that is respectful of privacy, self-determination, and does not further endanger people, nor is used to be weaponized against them. In addition to operating from an Indigenous-led initiative and opening space for grassroots leadership grounded in community needs, the alert must include mechanisms wherein persons who may be subject to the alert can speak back or provide feedback about the process, including what has been helpful and what is harmful. This feedback must also be used to generate improvements to the overall system. LFMO's vision goes beyond a simple alert system that would extend to connect vulnerable people to wraparound care that is rooted in wise practices of Indigenous harm reduction and trauma-informed care. We propose a specific national body, such as a Red Alert Response Centre, distinct from police and moving beyond surface-level support. The centre could help facilitate search and rescue efforts, provide ongoing support at different stages of missing persons cases, including long-term missing, and be a direct pathway to services and supports that can increase safety and resilience amongst Indigenous women, youth, and 2SLGBTQIA plus persons. LFMO's target message is that Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse persons deserve safety, protection, and equity. Our emphasis would not be in, uh, on conveying a specific message to the wider public who are often very anti-Indigenous, anti-poor, etc. Instead, we believe the Red Dress Alert should signal to Indigenous women, girls and gender diverse people four key messages. If you are missing, we will look for you. When we find you, we will help you. You will not be abandoned or ignored and you are loved. 
It's important to LFMO that the creation, implementation, and evaluation of the, the redress alert prioritize the needs and living experiences of Indigenous women, girls, and 2SLGBT persons above the general public's needs or awareness raising. The redress alert must be more than simple alert system where the case is closed once a person has been located safe or deceased. It must be a tangible way in which we can increase capacity for safety, decrease harms against already hyper surveillance groups and connect those who go missing or are at risk to well-funded services and supports. The overall goal must be for a red dress alert to produce actual quantifiable material changes in the lives of Indigenous women, girls, and gender diverse persons and their families and communities. It must meet the needs and reach those who are already or likely to be impacted by MMLIWG. If a red dress alert response were created, there would also be related contact Person, uh, okay, I'm going to hold you for one moment. Hold. Yep. Okay, sorry. I'm going to stop you for a second because you went a little frozen. So, um, if, a little. Oh. So, if you could go back about, uh, not big, if you could go back about two to three sentences in your presentation so we could link it all back together, I'll give you the remaining time. Please go ahead. Okay, sorry. The overall goal must be for a red dress alert to produce actual quantifiable material changes in the lives of Indigenous women, girls, and 2SLGBT persons and their families. If a red dress alert response center was created, there would also be related contact information and ways for the center to be of assistance. This would be similar to the Canadian Human Rights Trafficking Hotline, wherein a person signals the hotline is connected to various supports. So I'm going to end it there, but I would also like to uh, advise that LFMO also really appreciates the fact that a red dress alert may be too gender specific and may not be inclusive enough. And we need to find a way to make sure that whatever terminology we use is inclusive of everybody. Thank you so much for your testimony. Really well appreciated. I'm now going to turn it back to the Quebec Native Women's Incorporated and Marjolaine. Online, you have the floor for five minutes. Uh, good morning, uh, Marjolaine Etienne from the Quebec Native Women Association. Our organization is going to mark in May its 50th uh, year of existence as an organization. And I think uh, it would be important for me to point out that 50 years of history, of action, uh, which met with uh, some, some dead ends, but nonetheless, uh, Quebec Native Women Group was uh, constituted in order to follow through uh, with a motion that was adopted And we were able to meet, I believe it was in January or perhaps December last, we shared our perspectives with uh, the implementation of this uh, red dress alert system. <clears throat> we provided our uh, comments, and of course, there's some unique aspects which has to be ta ta taken into consideration if we are to develop this uh, alert program uh, adequately. In Quebec, there are certain uh, features that will perhaps uh, assist or hinder the implementation. Different from the rest of the country, perhaps, uh, West, for example, we currently do have some systems uh, here in place, but are quite different from what exists elsewhere in Canada. As an organization, we, of course, uh, agree with this uh, notion 
And we were, were anxious to see the implementation of such a system, an alert system, because it's part of a solution. And we want to optimize, maximize the security of women and girls, whether they're in their own home communities or uh, urbanized <clears throat> in the Quebec society. So we're for a system. But as for its implementation, we believe that the best way to implement this system for Quebec, uh, red dress alert, it would uh, require that we gather together at the same table all the stakeholders and participants, those who will be affected. And they should have roles and responsibilities, of course, and I'm referring, in this case, to our uh, law enforcement uh, <coughs> organizations, the police in Quebec. But uh, not only that, we have to deal with police forces which are, in general, outside of our communities. If we want to have a proper and adequate protection, we have to make sure that there is a cultural fit, that it be appropriate. We have to have a uh, multidisciplinary team so that we can attain results and deal with these either uh, disappeared individuals or murdered, assassinated individuals. <clears throat> But implementation, implement, implementation is the setup of a new organization. But prior to that, we, we have to do a preparatory phase. We should consult with all the experts and our uh, indigenous leadership so that uh, the implementation go, runs smoothly. And it has to be a comprehensive approach, holistic. There are some key players that are going to be required for this implementation process. We quite recently had an opportunity to d discuss and consult short uh, with the chief of uh, police, uh, uh, provincial, uh, Okay. Bon. Donc... okay, I'll be quick. So the implementation is very important, but we have to ensure that uh, how we implement it. And the key players So what I'm going to do is we will ensure that when we have questions and answers, giving you the opportunity to continue with your thoughts, okay? You had translation? I've, mine's on English, and I didn't have to. Just me? It shows English, and I had no. Yeah, I had no translation. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have any translation on mine. <laughs> so. Well, we're on air now, if you like. Thank you. Me, sir, you know that. You've worked with me many times. So, uh, so what we were going to do is we will turn into the first six, uh, six minutes for each person. I will pass the floor over to Anna or Anna for your lines of question. Anna, you have six minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you to the witnesses uh, for being here. This is a very important topic, and I have a few questions, so I am going to uh, start with Madame Lorraine. Agostini? Did I pronounce that properly? You did. Oh, great. Thank you. Yes. Because it could be Italian. Agostini. <laughs> um, in French? French? Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that the uh, alert system has to be administered by the indigenous um, people. Is, is that correct? Yes. So that is I, what I said. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just looking at some stats. So as of December 31st, there was... 1,186 children 
were successfully, successfully recovered through the Amber Alert. Do you think, and this is just your opinion, I understand, do you think that working together with all police sources across the provinces and the country, that we can incorporate that into the system so that it would be widespread? Absolutely, I think you could. Keeping in mind, though, that you need to have Indigenous peoples uh, administering that uh, rather than just the policing. Uh, I think it's really important that our Indigenous women or our Indigenous men, doesn't matter, uh, but the employees or whoever's administering needs to be Indigenous. Uh, I feel that we have more of a sense of what's happening within our communities and with the our women uh, rather than just kind of like looking at it as just okay you know that they're reported missing I think uh, because of the stats of how many women indigenous women that have gone murdered and missing I think uh, it calls for that type of administration and so my next question is to um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your last name Mitch Bourbon Bur 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 oh thank you <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like something really good to eat. Um, so, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I lost my head there for a minute. So, um, Mitch, thank you very much for, for uh, helping us better understand. I guess my question is, how can we as a committee put forward an opportunity or a plan, stop laughing, Leah, um, a plan to educate the men so that women are just as respected. I find that there's a bit of a, a misconnect, uh, if you will, and I know that you mentioned it, that you uh, quoted, and, and help me, uh, little boys see their moms being tortured and grow up to continue this behavior. 100%. So how can we change that attitude so that I know we're going to have to work with women, make them stronger, but also work with young boys and men to appreciate and respect women just as much as they respect each other? Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, first off, I, I'd like to clarify something. Um, the, the issue of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, uh, it, it, the, the phenomena of it uh, comes from, from two places. Uh, one place is uh, the... the uh, the trauma done by the colonizer and the learning of the men to be abusive. So that's one thing. But uh, as uh, Chief Lorraine Augustine mentioned, uh, there are uh, not